hello folks hi there so it's another episode of virtual cast episode uh, 47 i think so should be okay you do the numbers <laughs> sure but it's episode 47 and here we are uh, for like a usual topic now we're back from the um essence spiel special preview basically but yes we are it's <laughs> to, uh, technically this episode should be next week but due to me having kind of a, a board game camp and kyle having a gen con that's camp. right <laughs> gen con camp um that means that we are not here next week that's true. And we'll get to some... I don't know when we get the next episode from that from that one. But we'll see, we'll see. We'll, we'll manage. At we'll least figure we that won't out. Be out of, yeah, at least we won't be out of episode for the next week <laughs> or two. So. That's true. Just don't watch it next week. Watch it, na or watch it now. Watch it next week instead and you'll be just perfectly on time. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that can so be. turn it off. See you in a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then we get to our usual schedule. But we're getting back to our usual topics, uh, which uh, are the first one, at least, is recent plays. And just just run with it. Um, get to our board game geek tab here, way here. And okay. Kyle, why don't you start? Tell me what you played. All right, so I played, the, the game I'm going to talk about today is one that I spent a good portion of the last several days playing, and it is a, a game that I guess was on Kickstarter. I didn't even remember the Kickstarter. I don't know. Anyway, it just showed up. Uh, the game is called Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. Okay, yeah. So this is, look, I guess that's a video game franchise. I know I've heard about that. Uh, I've never played the video games, so I don't oh. have any way to compare. Uh, did you find it? Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I know the, the video game app. I'm playing the last uh, one of the series right now. So. Oh, okay. Well, so this one takes place in, you know, old-timey Italy. Uh, I guess before it was Italy. And you're in Venice, and you are a group of assassins and you're gradually leveling up basically what this is though is it is a re-implementation of a really good system that was uh, called v commandos and so what you're trying to do is you have missions and you're trying to be as stealthy as possible and sneak around because uh, although you can fight the guards that you're coming across and kill them and hide their bodies uh, <laughs> You're better off and you're stronger if you're sort of staying in the shadows. And so you're trying to use your equipment and to jump off of buildings and surprise people and, and, and try and stay hidden as much as possible. There may come a time when you can't do that anymore and you need to, you know, make a lot of noise and, in order to commit your, uh, or to, to complete your mission. But once you've alarmed the guards, then they stay in high alert stage and everything becomes a little bit faster and a little bit stronger. So you're really just trying to, to do that. The game is quite interesting because when you're reading the rule book, it says if you would like to keep reading the rule book, please do. Otherwise, just set up, you know, scenario 0 0.1 and, and start playing. And so I, I read the rules and then I just sort of played through the learn to play. And it was a pretty good way to learn it. It went through everything very slowly, bit by bit. And got me to a point where I feel comfortable playing the game. Um, it's your characters level up pretty slowly, but it and that's the one complaint I have so far is the the difference between the level zero and the level one special ability is really minor. There's this obnoxious tower that you can climb up to the top of, and when you climb up to the top, you can see a little bit better, and so other things become available. In the next one that I have to play, it looks like once you do that, more of the map will be revealed, and there might be, that's where your objective is going to be. At least yeah. that's what the, the book hints at. Um, you know, lots of characters I don't know, but I'm I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, I don't know. There might be those characters that you have, might might not be the characters from 
the series really or or this could oh. be the spin-offs of the series of the video game because in italy there was um uh, was it auditoric uh, i don't remember the Cla claudio auditore or something like that i don't remember you got well, there's one guy named claudio and there's i have you have to play if uh, if you're playing by yourself you have to use two assassins i have a lady named daria and a gentleman named claudio and then there's this other guy named enzio who who, who keeps uh, showing enzio. up oh okay and yeah Ezio Ezio auditore Okay. He, he shows up. He's he's in there, but you don't really use him. He just kind of shows up occasionally. He's the I think he's the most popular character. So oh. each time you get a new <laughs> like um, you get a new game from this series, uh, you get some you get to play kind of a, a historic figure from that time, which you have the genes for. Like there there is the basically this is the simulation that you're playing the old times and you're in uh, nowadays you're getting into that animus i don't remember exactly what f the, f the thing that puts you to sleep and you get into the memories of the of these old people and Ezio auditore was basically the main character of this series for a few titles and he's okay. i think the, the the most popular because the plot with him how they've done him is is great and uh, the tower thing is you, you said that you it, like I would, I would tie it thematically. So I would, I would help you tie it thematically. The tower that you that you climb to, these are like these uh, special spots, the the bird view spots. This this is basically for the leap of faith. Uh, the leap of faith is something that you just jump off the roof. You jump into the um, uh, into a haystack. Of, yeah, the haystack basically. <laughs> yeah, or or a hay ca a car ca cart. Um, yeah. So you jump into the haystacks, etc. This is this is this has been from the beginning, and okay. as the series began, it was more about stealth and assassinating from the shadows and from from the from behind, from up, from buildings. And, and the, as the series went on, there was even more combat introduced okay. into the series. So this one gets to these older roots of that. In the newer ones, you still would be better um, at you know, going from the shadows, assassinating people, but you can also fight because uh, the uh, the newer uh, titles from the series they go into the ancient times. So this is like a medieval Europe. So the the first one was the um, the, the the first Assassin's Creed is based on um, I don't know what was the where is was the city. But it's like somewhere near Mesopotamia, Turkey, some, somewhere near oh, okay. that. The the uh, yeah, the Middle East. Yeah. Hmm. And well, I'm. Then they went into Middle Ages. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have any you know th thematic background for this, but it, I I am enjoying the game. It, there's uh, there, it came with two expansions that go into like modern day Tokyo, and also mm -hmm. a sidestep mm -hmm. into Rome. So there seems to be a lot to explore. It's 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 a campaign. But it looks like it's the kind of thing you can just reset. There's also like achievement stickers as you're going through. Like each mission has something called a hundred percent sync, and you're yes. trying. If if it's yeah. some extra goal, it's usually not anything very hard. But if you do this little extra goal, then you get to put a sticker in the rule book uh, that doesn't really do anything other than show that you can <laughs> that, that you're that you did whatever the special goal was for that mission. It's 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 quite enjoyable. Uh, I'll probably continue through. There's something like 24 chapters in the base box, and I'll probably continue through those and then see where it goes from there. It's it, it's good. It makes me want to play V Commandos again. That's nice. I would like to try this one out because as you as you talked about that, the synchronizing, etc., 100%, this was also in the earlier titles. So they they pay homage to the earlier titles of Assassin's Creed, though I like the the newer ones even better, and I would have loved that they would taken the newer approach to Assassin's Creed video game into this one. Mm. But why not? This this one is <laughs> iconic. I mean, this one is something you everybody started loving Assassin's Creed from. So with that Ezio Auditore and the Italy uh, title, I don't remember what they are exactly, but yeah. So there you go. That's my recent play. All right, so my recent play is uh, also like Assassin's Creed is uh, is about 
you also get a lot of those uh, armor and clothes, like in RPG, like uh, type, you know, open world type games, uh, video games as well. There are different ropes, and you can customize, uh, like in newer ones, especially. And the clothes that you get are beautiful, gorgeous, and I'm trying to <laughs> get to my <laughs> recent play okay. with that. That's weird. I'm trying. This is a I'm very trying. crippled segue. Anyway, <laughs> I, I think fashion was on top in, in that mid medieval ages, Italy, amongst assassins. Okay. They were, they were fighting Templars, I, and they couldn't fight the Templars in a usual uh, peasant cloak. But they had to do some fancy cloak. And you can find fancy dress in a game called pret a pret a Ah, okay. Oh, our our friend from Serbia is on, so we'll just say hello to you. <laughs> oh, hi, Mirren. Again. So, yeah, Predaborte. This is, and I have the third edition now. I just, I just bought it from the whim. I'm like, I just went there uh, into the shop. I was like, I'm in a mood to buy a game. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just, okay. I just want to buy a game. And then I went there and I bought a game called Predaborte. And uh, my friend called and said uh, he's uh, sadly uh, broken his, his leg uh, doing some sports. Uh, yeah. Was... Jumping off a tower? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing Assassin's Creed real life. No. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Don't do that. Uh, but I was like, okay. I come to a place and I'll bring this new game. I was like, ooh, exciting. Uh, he also wanted to try this one. So, Pirate is about the, uh, I don't know if it's high fashion, but it's it's about fashion. Fashion uh, show type fashion, yeah. Fashion show, yeah, fashion show type fashion. Uh, you uh, get the design cards, you get some contracts, you hire employees. These are basically them, like special abilities. They make your life more easier uh, in this game but this game is heavy but the, not in a sense of rules uh, in this game this is a worker placement game with that set collection that your game is basically you build a tableau of cards you get buildings that you can put the uh, employees in but you have some spots for employees uh, from the start and then you're getting those different uh, design cards and those design cards they need to have certain colors of resources let's say this is more abstract but basically they want different types of uh what what do you call i don't know a anyway uh, materials right and uh you can buy those materials or you can get them through other means through the special cards and then you fill up those design cards as you can see here you fill up the design cards with those materials and uh, you want to put up a show every every like three uh, rounds there is a fashion show in cities and then you put up a collection the collection must be from the same type of cards so basically these cards are like color coded as well there's like casual business uh, I don't know the sports dress etc and you want to have quite a few cards from one set basically you put we put out one set you have to complete that with the resources and then you get some extra tokens that uh, can be exchanged for the fashion show prizes, which are basically like uh, prestige points that you can then get money from and exchange to real points. You know, this right. chain, chain reaction going on there. But you also get money back. So you invest in those dresses by buying materials, materials, but then you get more money back from there. So it's all about investing uh, well and getting even more back because the cash, the money as well is also a point at the end of the game. And this game is crunchy <laughs> because the worker placement is, is straightforward. You collecting the stuff straightforward, but <coughs> you have to be precise with your tableau building. Uh, you can get short on money at some point and you like everything costs and you have to be sure that you have the upkeep costs paid for otherwise you have to take a loan and it will get you even more deep into the loans and etc so there's the loan mechanic it's not so harsh uh but there is also a cool mechanical like a bank credit mechanic the bank spot 
in that bank spot you get there you get the money and during the next fashion show you have to give that same amount of money back so basically you're just having some extra money right now you have to have little upkeep costs there extra but you can earn much more if you get that money you know right so it's it's like a, a helper tool you know which i like it's not straight oh i uh, have to loan ten dollars from the bank and then i have to give away 20. it's not so harsh you know and yeah eventually it's just all about min maxing and optimizing your tableau engine whatever uh, getting those different cars that give you free opportunities extra opportunities to use the worker spots uh, getting buildings for free or getting uh, materials cheaper I liked it it was really yeah. cool mechanically really cool thematically it also ties to the theme but uh, it was yeah at some point I was like okay so I need $27 for that one uh, then I have two upkeep rounds which uh, brings me to 12 now I have uh, 40 uh, or something like I, I have to pay forty dollars in total. I have to think in, uh, in advance because the fashion show in is in three rounds, and I get money back from the fashion show in three rounds. Right now, I have to survive the upkeeps, buy more materials, <laughs> but I need to get this dre dress over here because this one gives me bonus. This one gives me that much money, and then you are just doing the math of, of how you can squeeze in an extra dollar because you wanna get this uh, dress from that collection also in in there so you can get a great collection uh on a fashion show uh, but there's also the prices for different what you what you get uh, you get those different special tokens prestige mm -hmm. uh trends and each time uh during the fashion shows uh, the different uh, those tokens are uh, awarded differently sometimes trend is more uh viable sometimes uh, uh the uh what, what we call dpr etc so sometimes a, a huge a huge collection is great and right. you have to think about that as well oh, a lot of stuff going on but not yeah, so there hard definitely is <laughs> yeah i don't know that i've played the new version yet i have the new version but i think i've only ever played the older version so uh, I don't know what the changes are. Probably not very much, though, from what I can... I've read the rule book to the new one. Just it, The, the art on the box is a little striking. And I, I have, I have I some personal experience where I got it out and said, let's play this, and somebody said, well, that, that doesn't look like something I'll enjoy. So, <laughs> um, But I, I don't mind it. But it is definitely... I don't know. It's very pink. <laughs> Yeah, let's address the elephant uh, in room is that this is a game about fashion and not all people in the world are interested in fashion, but that's the same with uh, other yeah. games such as like Wingspan, the bird watching, etc. This is interesting and this is so different from the usual uh, medieval fantasy and ancient worlds and whatever else, the civilizations, etc. All of these usual themes going on this is something so unique and has a theme it's a heavy economic euro game that has a theme which is great and i love that yeah and i think it looks good so well good i'm glad you got to try it i would love to try the new version someday oh you should it's a good game all right let's get to the next topic which is call of the old Talk about okay. games that are at least five years old that we like. Okay. So in keeping with our global theme today, the old game that I'm talking about is also one that I'll probably not play again anytime soon. But the game is... Uh, it was the second game from GMT that I ever played. Uh, the first being Twilight Struggle. And this second one was uh, Labyrinth, The War on Terror. So, um, and it's, I mean, it's not really related, but it's kind of similar in its mechanisms to Twilight Struggle and those other card-driven games. But what you, it, look, component-wise, it's definitely not a looker. Um, <laughs> but one person is playing the United States, and one person is playing 
basically a, a series of terrorist cells and the U.S., and they're very different, right? The U.S. player can go in and just take over a place, right? Just say, I'm going to take over it. But then has a lot of trouble uh, holding on to things and keeping things going in the long run. So it's, it's uh, and much like the other games in the series, you have cards, and some cards are for one player, some cards are for another, but you have to play most of them anyway, and so you're choosing when to trigger... Uh, when to trigger events so that they're best for you or not best for the other player, and then spending various action points to do different things. A couple different ways it can end. Anyway, it's it's an old game, and they keep updating it, right? I mean, it's like, it's not just one that sat there, like, as different events. If you looked at the title, it was like 2001 through question <laughs> mark. And that you can get, I believe there's even two new updates to it that um, that sort of incorporate more modern events. But, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a heavier game uh, in terms of rules, in terms of explanation. And um, I, although I do think it's good, it's just not one that I, I can see myself coming back to. Uh, I know that's we're not in that section yet, but... You know, if, if I were picking between this and, say, Twilight Struggle, I'd definitely pick uh, the latter. <laughs> but that is my old game that is still pretty good. Yeah, no, no, not, nothing that I would be interested in. But why not? Well, you do. You. I'll see there. Look, at look, 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 there's three updates. No, two. The green one's the original. And then two updates. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. The family reunited. Okay, that's weird. Anyway, uh, let's get to my call of the old, and this is a little bit. So we, we we're going with the theme of uh, board games based on video games. Uh huh. Seems because uh, mine is, and I remember this one from. I was uh, listening to I think the Secret Cabal uh, Gaming podcast, and then they mentioned that game again. I don't know for, through some conversation. I was like, oh yeah, I like this game, but I had a problem with uh, the theming due to. This is Bioshock Infinite. Ah. Oh. So, The Siege of Columbia. So, this is a game about, uh, the, it's the, also the video game series uh, Bioshock, uh, and I played the Bioshock Infinite. I played, the, that's the only one from the series that I played. Oh, and oops. And <laughs> I was I was um, I was moved by the ending, kind of a little bit shocked by the ending. I was like, okay, but the game was great. I liked the game really very much, the video game. So and then I got this one, an Isaac Vega and Plat Hat Games. I was like, cool, cool, nice. I, yes, sure. They do cool, interesting games, and this was a cool, interesting. Game. This is about uh, two different factions fighting each other. Uh, these are like, they are. Basically, the side characters, the the the, they are they're just a, a nuisance in a video game because you're playing Brooke and uh, I remember the, the the girl's name Booker, uh, right? Or B Booker, sorry, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I don't remember. I'm I'm not good with names. Uh, but right. Booker and not the Alicia, but uh, I don't know something like that. Yeah, so, something like that. Yeah, and these are the two characters that in the board game are. A nuisance now and you're playing the two factions which are warring against each other you know and in the video game it was the other way you know you, you play the main character and that's what annoyed me in this game but on the other hand it was a good game uh, you are having those different troops and different generals uh, and the airships and uh, you are fighting for the territories you're trying to do very stuff control build uh, the strongholds etc you know Kind of like a two-player, though you can play it four-player, but it's it's like War of the Ring. Uh, just play two players, you know. Uh, this one is just about area control, area majority thing. And I like the whole looks of the game, and I like the mecha uh, mechanics or or the mechanism of sliding. Uh, so there are the um, the, the air rails. rails. Yeah. yeah, the sliding air rails, and I like that because it could be a, a boon, it could, it could be a bane for you as well, because... Uh, you are sliding your people 
down that rail and you have to roll a die and at some point I remember exactly but you can lose your uh, people there on the line because they can fall off you know you have to be successful in in sliding the air rail and that's where sometimes you're like okay uh the opponent's troops are coming but will they be able to get there <laughs> unharmed oh yes <laughs> I like right. that, you know, or or will I be able to get all of my troops across this one? It was just so much excitement, like push your luck element going on there. I like that a lot. And the whole problem of the game is uh, the the theme itself. Because if that, if that would be something else, another theme, something uh, uh, just, you know, uh, not from video game, but I don't know, just... just made up world of mm -hmm. whatever two factions fighting each other and maybe those nuisances would be some kind of evil entities uh, going back and forth and you know uh, disturbing you during the battlefield that would be much better than you have this booker and uh, this elizabeth alicia maybe. alice whatever yeah yeah and they are are a nuisance but you know them from the video game and you know they are like main characters good characters and you really want to control them you're like it, it messes with your head hmm. that's what i felt about bioshock yeah. infinite but it's a good game i enjoy bioshock infinite a lot actually um you know it's it has a lot so of all of the plant hat games the this one shares most of its dna with city of remnants uh, which yeah. and my only issue with the game is that it it tells you that it's a two to four player game, and that's kind of not right. It's really a two player game. Um, <laughs> it is. If if it's four players, you've got some weird team rules and like slightly different colored pieces, and it was if you played it at more than two, it didn't really work very well. I enjoy it a lot though, so. And it's I, I played the video game, both original Bioshock and Infinite, because I knew that this game was coming out, and I wanted to be ready for it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So let's get to the next topic, which is funky opponents. And Kyle, tell me your pick, and I will show the picture. I'll be out of the picture myself for just a minute. Okay. Well, just run my pick. My pick, I brought visual aids today, so uh, perhaps you, I mean, you can go to... The, the, the pick is called Mystic Market, uh, but my visual aid is right here. Uh, in the game, there's one component that really stands out, and that is this tray, and it has these little vials on it. And basically, the game is, is kind of a, a very simple game about buying and selling things. But kind of the fun part is, you know, you see the prices that you can sell things for on this slider, and when you sell something, you pick it up. Like if I sold this uh, this orange thing, I would pick up this very fun little jar, and I would put it at the end, and then it adjusts everything else downward. It's a very nice functional component, uh, but it also has a lot of good table presence. It's well constructed. It's made out of plastic, so you don't have to assemble it yourself. These little jars are are fun to hold and play with. They're you know they, they have some like glitter or something in them. So it's it's definitely a, a very good component that really fits well with how the game is supposed to work and conveys all of the information very clearly. So it's one I've I've quite enjoyed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You you were very precise with your words. I'm back. Okay, well, did you want me to go on? I mean, there's not that much to talk about it. It's a tray with some vials. Uh, <laughs> looks cool. Looks cool. Looks really, really, really cool. I like that, yeah. Are there those vials? Can you see those vials separately? Yeah, they're like this. Just wait. Just oh. I'll solo you out. Show them again. Yep, that's, that, that's one of them. I mean, I, I don't have enough fingers to hold them all. Uh, it's some kind of glitter. You don't open them. Uh, it, it, it's sealed, so you wouldn't open it. But it's it looks like it's some maybe paste and glitter. It sparkles a little bit. Okay, nice. So, and they you know that's what it comes. That's the retail version. It's not like a Kickstarter special or anything. I don't know if this game was even on Kickstarter. Um, yeah. So it's it's a very simple game. I don't know that the game's gonna 
win any awards but your minds, yeah. it well but it's it's a good game if you had some you know if you're playing with with kids maybe i mean it's not a kids game but with kids or people who don't want something super thinky but want a little bit of a kind of a stock markety uh, type game so there you have it yeah all right thank you i'm i'm sorry i have a bit of sore uh, throat so it's ah. hard for me to talk a lot we haven't having some kind of a drink to balance that but uh all right so my funky component and uh, as a segue segment um a segue to uh f- from from uh the bioshock infinite uh when i looked at the bioshock Infinite, i was like okay i'm going to talk about this game and i was like oh i really like the bioshock infinite airships they're small they're cool i like them they're nice i was like wait I think the coolest airships that I uh, have found in games, though I haven't played many many games about airships, but I've played there are a lot. <laughs> I, yeah, but I mean, the miniatures of airships, uh, except if you're not. I'm, I'm not thinking about the uh, Star Wars ships, etc. These are like fantastical. These are like sci-fi things. But you're thinking of dirigibles. Uh, more of dirigibles, but these are airships, really. It's from the Scythe Wind Gambit. And I feel like I, I really like those ships. The okay. problem is I usually don't <laughs> use them in a game, but I really do like them. As you can see uh, from this picture, for example, how it stands out. Uh, they have some detail. They have this kind of a long uh, foot. Uh, they are put on the plastic foot. And they kind of they really stand out. And they are good to handle because they're up in the air you can really see them the, thematically they're made well and you can put the meeples on them you can transport the meeples on them they are like the ships from container the game called container kind of a thing you know okay remind me of that a little bit is it just a bit a, a bit i mean those are really big empty ships but okay yeah th- but they look like uh, usual uh, marine vessels but made into airships. <laughs> okay. They kind of look like something. Fair like enough. That. But I do really like them. They are very different from the usual things, and it just, I don't know, just cool. I really want to use them. But yeah. they are a nuisance. They are. <laughs> That's the least used module of any of the ones I've ever had in Scythe. Just because it just really, it adds a bunch of rules without adding a whole bunch of extra enjoyment and that, that just brings up the conflict you know in my head like i want to use those cool pieces but no right not the rules <laughs> <laughs> if they if i could just use them instead oh you can just use them instead of your character well just you use know? yeah well you you know you could Bryant. right Bryant, i mean yeah. it if, if you didn't change any rules it wouldn't matter what you used um, <laughs> you could so get that, a funko pop for that matter uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh, this is my choice for funky opponents the wind gambit airships from site all right all right and here we are i'm not gonna uh, take you away from the bgg be- beautiful bgg page and as you can see here this is a store update and all those different bits and things but the sad news as i heard there won't there won't be any uh european uh, shop oh. uh, opening uh, like they had it for a long time they were announcing that th- there's a US shop the BGG store and the European shipping will be separately and okay. basically now it's indefinitely uh, close I mean like not close but the on put put on hold indefinitely. suspended yeah. suspended yeah and it's sad because there are so many cool bits and things that I want to buy <coughs> But if I buy a lot, and I've bought from BGG store before, and if I buy below twenty dollars, it's good. But if I want to buy for forty dollars, I have to pay extra customs, and they have to go through the oh. customs. It takes long. I, I don't want to mess with that, you know. But we'll see. Maybe at some point, but you know, open the European yeah, store. you could. All, uh, Victor's coming here in two weeks, so you could always have him bring them back to Europe for you. Um, True. Yeah. But this is true. <laughs> yeah. Let's anyway. just keep that for now. This is not the topic of 
today because the topic of it's the not. day is top 10 good games we'll never play again. And there you are. When I came up with the topic, I didn't tell you exactly what I had in mind myself. And that's good because that's not the shoot <laughs> ourselves. But what I did, because there are so many games uh, that I will most likely never play again. But ne never say never. So th this is disclaimer. I might play the game on the list at some point. It, it could be some kind of a weird coincidence in five years. Whatever, you know. But yeah. I do not tend to uh, play these games. I, I, I'm not planning on playing them. But who knows? Maybe they will be a yeah. good company and they're playing that game. And I'm like, should I be an outsider or just go in and play with them? So, so. Yeah, for me, I mean, I basically went down into my game closet and made a list of, of the games that I really enjoyed at one point. Uh, you know, some of these games were at some point in my top 100 games, but I just don't ever, I just don't see myself having any desire to go back to them. Um, or for one or two, for one of them, there's a reason why I'll probably never play it again. But, um, <laughs> but uh, it's just things that I just don't see myself going back to, but there's nothing wrong with them at all. And another restriction I had on myself to make it even more interesting, because I could just fill up with uh, the games that I've talked a lot about. For example... Archipelago is the one that I will never play again because I have the Living Planet, but I do love this game. It's it's a great game, you know. And they there are many of such games. Anyway, I restricted myself to the ones that I've played once, and I think they are great, but I will never play again. Oh. Yeah, I did not restrict myself to that. These are all games that I've played many of them lots of times. That's fine. And um that I've really enjoyed I just won't go back to I did however not put any legacy type games on here because that's kind of a different category yeah, yeah, for me for me as well yeah so but yeah it's, it's just it was the way to restrict uh, the list itself because otherwise it would be yeah. just uh, same same games all the time or you know or just too many games to choose from anyway well most of these aren't games that we talk about a lot so we'll see uh for me too, yeah. These are the games we don't usually talk about. Anyway, let's uh, get to the number 10. Alright, my number 10 is from one of my very favorite video game franchise, or sorry, board game franchises. Right, one of my very favorite games is Sentinels of the Multiverse. But Sentinels of the Multiverse has a a younger brother, and that game is called Sentinel's Tactics. And this is sort of a miniatures combat type game, and you know you play scenarios out of a out of a scenario book, and you can play most of your favorite characters. They even had some nice pre-painted little minis for the game. Uh, what is it called? Right? What's called? Sentinel's Tactics. Sentinel's Tactics it doesn't show it here. Uh, well, am I having a brain fade? I thought that's what it was called. But yeah, uh, you move on. I'm, I'm going to just search for that. Yeah, this, yeah. Look, look for Sentinel's Tactics, The Flame of Freedom. Sentinel Flame. Tactics, sorry. No S the end of Sentinels. Okay. There you go. Okay, yeah. All right. So, yeah, th there you have it. Um, again, this is a, a great little game. It has a really, it had a really interesting way of doing combat. That you know, you it, it, it was it had everybody with lots of special powers, special abilities. It was kind of complex. So the best way to play it was to play just head to head. Like you know, I take three any three characters, you take any three characters or four, and we we just fight it out or try and get control. Uh, it looks like this is a prototype version. There you go. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it, but I just don't see myself hurrying back to it. There was a, a pre-order for it for um, for some expansions that the company eventually backed off of and, and just refunded everybody. So there's that too. But um, and the one problem I had with the rules was it was sometimes difficult to tell 
elevation. Elevation mattered, and it wasn't always apparent from, from looking at the maps. Um, but I really enjoyed this game. I played it a lot of times, and I just don't ever see myself going back to it. Mostly because there's a lot of other games that do a very similar thing, but do it in a little bit more of a streamlined way. So, there you have it. My number 10, Sentinel Tactics. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, my number 10 is, is a game that I, I really enjoyed, and I enjoy the theme, and it is different, but the genre of that game is something I don't usually tend to like. And if it's as straightforward, only that genre, then I just... I just kind of, you know, make myself play these games. And uh, it's a racing game called Snow Tales. Okay. And why doesn't it show here? I don't know. Snow. Oh, Tales. Sorry. I, I put Tales like uh, fairy tales, not the, ah. the fairy tales. Yeah. I don't know why it's, it's, it's Snow Tales. Snow Tales, yeah. yeah. The plain word. Anyway, Snow Tales, you can see, uh, I really like this track. It's, it's, this game looks beautiful, and the little trees, etc. And uh, you have your uh, own, like, a slider, and uh, you have two dogs, which have a different speed, and you have to balance out on the on curves, and the, like how you, how you turn, etc., so you don't bump into things, and how you go move through the trees, etc. Uh, yeah, you manage, you manage three different types of kind of a speed or, or turns and things. I, this is this is great. This is this is something I really like. It's it's quite mechanical. It's quite Euroy for a racing game. The problem is that it is a racing game, and I'm not <laughs> the biggest fan of race to something. You know, race to the finish line because at some point, if I'm very bad at it, and I was was, uh, I could see just you know a runaway leader type of problem going on there because the other person just does it so well that they are far away from me and what I can do if play the two players it's frustrating then and race to the points is the same for me it's also racing kind of a game race to the points I don't like that I like to do my stuff build something up and then I finish and then we compare so for example we both finished the ride but I did it this way you did it that way let's compare through us some other means so that would be cool the only racing game that i have is steampunk rally but it's it is different it's tableau building it's i, I like that so but this one okay i would definitely recommend it to everybody who likes racing games uh, who likes even the uh, i think flam rouge uh, etc this is something in that vibe it's really cool but racing not for me okay play that yeah i played snow tails this is the one where you have the dog sled and you have to sort of balance the yeah. difference of the speed between them and that'll determine how you steer mm -hmm. which was kind of the the hook of the game yeah it's, it's a fine game all right then let's get to number nine Okay, number nine was an earlier deck building game, and it's it's it had a great theme that I loved, and it had some really interesting rules. The game is called Nightfall, uh, and this was a game where you were some vampires and werewolves, and you were fighting, and and the interesting thing was you had cards, and they had different moons on them, and if you played one card, you could play a card that matched the the different moon and make different combos for yourself. It was really interesting. There were lots of, uh, of expansions for it. Um, it, was, it was a great game. I really loved playing it. But, you know, I, I just find that there are a lot of better deck building games around these days. And so this one was a little bit more rules heavy and a little wonky on some timing things. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, I just don't see myself eager to run back to it even though i do think it's still a good game and i i still really probably would enjoy it if i were to bring it out i just don't see myself doing so yeah this is the one i looked at the the theme i don't know i'm not interested in the theme that much 
and the looks of the game just I don't know just doesn't doesn't well, bring me to okay. the game. <laughs> if you look at this it looks so much outdated even for yeah it, it is a little bit dated um, I don't recognize that card but uh, maybe that's from an expansion that I didn't get but oh it's a theme project Okay, because <laughs> I didn't recognize that one at all. It, these the aren't; re these are all from a retheme. It looks like the original ones you showed were the right ones, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Oh, this is the original. So, I just I, I was fascinated by the idea of the order of the, the order in which you play the cards matters because mm -hmm. you've got that you know the different moons that chain off of different ones, and you could play a bunch of different things and have a really interesting turn, but. I just don't know that I'll go back to it. All right. So my number nine is a game that started my, not really started my craze for that, but it was one of the uh, first heavier economic games that I skipped before because it's like, no, I've never played that because it's a boring theme. But then I was like, okay, after stockpile I was like, okay, what else is there? You know, what, what's heavier, you know, uh, so because stockpile is quite easy, but I started liking this kind of economy in games, and the ground floor oh. is the one, <laughs> oh, they have the second edition, I, I've played the second edition, I've played, I have the TMG, uh, Ooh, I, had I have some, edition. I have some thoughts about the second edition, uh, <laughs> it is definitely a step back uh, graphically. If you look yeah, at the artwork yeah, I, or anything. I saw that. The Spielbergs did that, yeah. They... Anyway, uh, this is about yeah making money, building your office buildings, etc. Hiring personnel, you know, just doing all this kind of a simulation of business. Uh, building your real estate thing. And I really liked this one, but it was very heavy. When I played that one, I enjoyed really enjoyed my time and I, I feel like this is a really good game but each time this is an investment and this is the theme of my list here uh, there are games that need an investment in time but I d didn't have that at that time especially when I played a ton of different games uh, new Essen releases uh, more reviews and things that I did you know I just couldn't keep up with that and this game just you know if you don't play that it's hard to get back to this one because you need to kind of relearn not even the rules as much as rules but small details and tactics because if you do bad in this game it just doesn't feel good you know <laughs> you have to you have to be strong in this game as well so but it was a really good design i really like the design of this game yeah i like the game a lot and i actually considered it for the list because i'm kind of at the same place with it um, although, you know, I, yeah, <laughs> I guess I'll just say it like that. There's the new version. Yeah, Oof. The, version. <laughs> the new version has about 16 different versions of brown. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. it's a game. we can do a it's list a of bad second editions. Uh, anyway. True. Anyway, let's get to number eight. Number eight. eight. My number eight actually kind of hurts me a little bit because this is a game that I really loved. Um, I also spent a lot of money to get a fancy, super deluxe new edition. And then when I played the new version, I, I realized that the game's maybe just a little too simple for me. Um, I, I really enjoyed it back in the day, but I just don't ever see myself rushing to play it again. The game is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Uh, like I said, I used to think the world of this game, but I think must have, mu much of that may have been nostalgia. And uh, it's it's just the the way that you play it is just so very basic. And there's with the new rules, there's not somebody eliminated anymore. I know I could go back and play the old one if I wanted to, but I just don't know. There's a lot of setup that needs to go into it. And it takes up a lot of table space for a game that is really very basic. 
And while I loved it back then, I just don't see myself ever really excited to pull it out again, despite how great it looks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's something I really wanted to try out yeah, because of Bruno Cattello. Um, but something, yeah, I'm, I wasn't eager to, uh, to buy because I heard, yeah, how simple it is. And I don't know. I just don't want to pay just for the great looks. Yeah. The game. Well, and the new reason. version is in such the, in the, one of those huge cube boxes, which makes it very difficult to pull things out and, and set it up. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a painted version here. Nice. Oh yeah, mine mine is like that. That's the version I have. It it mm -hmm. looks great, uh, but it's just not as much fun as it needs to be. <laughs> yeah. All right, so my number eight is a game that that is such a great idea, such an innovative idea in my opinion, but struggles because of that as well. It's a four-player only game. You have to have four players. That's Witness. Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> and... Witness is a good game. I'm like a deduction game. You whisper into others, uh, each other's ears. Uh, you have a partial information, and then the other person has a partial information, and then you play this kind of a telephone game, and you forget some information. And the first cases are quite easy, but as you go through, there are like uh, 50 cases, and they become even harder and harder. And it's it's a great, um, I think, deduction game. A crime game but also I would say it is kind of like a social deduction game I would say because it, it is very social in a way how you whisper into others ears and try to get to the right information but it gets twisted on the way <laughs> great just great uh, but it's four players only it's all about deduction some people are not into that you know and they get frustrated about having the information then that you forgot that they said it to you or maybe they interpreted it differently whatever you know some people just don't like that it's 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 for a very specific group of people and four players not less yep. not more that's that's <laughs> that's something that sinks this game as well as sure. it helps it to be unique that's my Witness, yeah, I enjoy the game. I feel almost the same way, though. You really have to play with the right other three people. And the first, you almost have to play that first game every time you're teaching it because it's the, the information you're looking for is not always readily apparent. And you need to kind of get people, because you just don't know your first time what you're even looking for, right? You see a picture. Yeah, and you're going to describe it somehow, but you don't know what's important. So Yeah, yeah, true that. All right, let's get to number seven. Okay, number seven. Number seven is another game that I really, really enjoyed back in the day. Um, it was an early introduction to CGE games. Uh, it's kind of complicated. The game is called Dungeon Lords. Mm -hmm. And you were sort of the minions that were helping your Dungeon Lord to try and set traps for heroes. You wanted to attract the right ones in and then have enough traps and uh, things so that you could kill them and avoid them coming in and destroying your dungeon. You were also building up the dungeon. Uh, the the game really, again, I think it is one that kind of has to be played with its max player count, but the rules were not intuitive. The way that sort of damage was dealt to the different characters was, was kind of difficult to manage, and you could easily make a mistake that would, I mean, that was part of the game, but you could easily make a mistake that would really ruin several turns uh, to, <laughs> in the future. And so that sometimes was frustrating for people. Um, but I really loved the game. As, a, as an intellectual puzzle, I thought it was great. As a thematic choice, it was one of the first games that did this kind of a theme. Uh, I thought that was great. I loved the little minion pieces that you had. Um, they're the same ones that are in Dungeon Pets, which I think is a superior game. But 
But I, I really did like Dungeon Lords, but I also really don't ever see myself pulling it out again. Yeah, this game reminded me of, uh, of there's a, um, a video game, also Dungeon Lords. I don't remember the, uh, the name of the video game. Uh, also about the imps, and then you are a dungeon lord, and then you are uh, building up a dungeon, trying to collect the riches. <sighs> it's an old game, but but this one is based on that video game. It's 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 not the same franchise because they had to refilm it because otherwise they could have to pay you know uh, the, the the fee franchise. But okay, yeah, that's why I was interested in the game in this game at first. But then I looked at this game, I heard about this game, I watched some videos, I was like, mm, that's not something I want to play. <laughs> it definitely is a, a lot thinkier of a game than it looks like it probably should be. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Dungeon Pets. I played Dungeon Pets. I went through to that and I loved it. My number seven is... A game that is... Wait, where's my list? It's here, yeah. Whatever 7 <laughs> is also about a kind of a dungeon, uh, a scary dungeon, and you have to escape that one. And it's called Fearsome Floors. Ah. Oh. And Fearsome Floors is Freedom Freezer game. I think that's the only one I would like to play maybe play again but i think <laughs> play it again okay first of all it's hard to get and uh, i don't think it's uh, people will, will you know want to play this game it's an old design i just don't think i will ever get to that design but this game is about you have your yeah, tokens your people and they have different movement and if they move uh, then you have to uh, flip them and then they have a slower movement point uh, less movement points and you have to get out and away from the monsters and then you have some obstacles and blood splats that you <laughs> kind of slide across etc but you can also manipulate the monster and try to eat people etc it was just so much fun how you try to lure the monster to the opponents and try to escape that and then uh, you have basically met with your own destiny because you somehow <laughs> lured them to the opponents but the opponents weren't that um that they, were, they were smart enough to kind of have a counter attack on you and then right. you are with that monster now here and oh my god okay i have to run away now just i don't know it's just so much fun the theme is great it's simple as you can get but yeah the, the old design and maybe there will be a reprint it's hard to get i don't hmm. know just i don't think i will ever get to that again yeah this is one that i i actually think holds up really well still it's it's definitely not one for my list because i would gladly play it just about any time um oh look at that um uh, but yeah it's 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 very simple but Sometimes this particular designer, he always swings really big. And sometimes he hits, sometimes he misses. But this one was a hit for me. Oh, there's a, a homemade version, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the sort of the manipulation. It is also kind of a race uh, trying to get out first. But I, yeah, one I really enjoy, even still. Yeah. Anyway, that's my number Seven, I think it is. Yes. Let's get to number six then. Oh. Okay. My number six is a game that when it came out, I thought it was the greatest, the greatest thing ever. Um, and even today, I think it holds up really well. But there's a lot of complexity in it, and there's it's a there's some balance, not necessarily issues, but player count and the game is called cry havoc and it was a game from portal games and you were various factions fighting in a mine trying to get these crystals and then there were some monsters that that would in a three-player game sort of operated by themselves and in a four-player game somebody would control 
And it was a really interesting game of, of sort of building up your own unique characters. It had a very nice combat system of sort of majorities on these different boards. Uh, it, it, I really liked the game. I, I still do really like the game. But I think there's enough rules overhead that I just don't know that I'd ever want to teach it again. It's one that you kind of had to relearn all the rules every time you played it anyway because there were a lot of them. And again, there, I won't say that there were balance issues, but some of the different factions were much more intuitive to play uh, than the others. And so if you played with a newer player, you kind of always had to take a different, you know, there were just some things you wouldn't be able to do in order for other people to have a good time on their first time. And so it kind of felt a little samey after a while. Uh, I think maybe if there'd been a few more expansions, it might've been better. Uh, but then again, there would, that might <laughs> cause balance issues even more. Uh, but I really liked the game. I just don't know that I'll be crying havoc anytime soon. Yeah. All right. I see what you did there. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. Um. <laughs> anyway, my number six is also a combat game, a two-player combat game, though you, it says that you can play four players. Uh, never, never trust these lies about <laughs> games because they are really two-player games. Uh, that's Neuroshima Hex. Ooh, that is definitely a lie, you said. That is a two-player game all the way. <laughs> yeah, but one to four. Anyway. Yeah, the one is also a lie, I'll just tell you that. Uh, <laughs> the one is like a puzzle that you're solving. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this, this game is about, as you can see here, it's, it's expansion, but it doesn't matter. So you have different factions that have kind of a small ability. These are the tiles, and this is a tactical combat game. And first of all, I'm not the biggest fan of tactical combat games, really. I'm not, I just, they just don't just uh, excite me that much. But I tried Neuroshima Hex, and I really like this style, like, not the style of game, I really like the mechanics, I really like how it went, how it's so smooth and balanced, etc. And in this game, you have like your stronghold, and you will have different troops and different special things that you can do, nets and whatever else. Uh, it seems like dice can f freeze people. I don't know. I don't know. There are so many. I think factions they eat now. people, is what they do. But um... <laughs> okay, maybe I don't know. I'm I'm played that much in my hex. That's a very new time. army, but yeah. And the the thing is that. This game being great means that in order for, for me to enjoy it thoroughly, I have to commit to that game. And I right. don't have that time for commitment. I, I Quite a few games. I like games that will not, uh, you know, that don't have to pull me in wholeheartedly because I just, I just, I just want to play that game and then I want to play that game. Nurushima Hex feels... It's not a lifestyle game, but it feels a bit a bit like that. You have to play it a ton. Otherwise, you're just yeah. missing out quite a lot on, on new factions, etc. And that's why I will never go back to this game. Though I like the the choice of you get three tiles, you have to choose... Was it you choose one and discard the two? Or you you discard, two discard two and you, you, you... So you discard one and you play the two, I believe. Yeah, something like that, yeah. So I like that, so... You get three tiles, but they're like, okay, I want to use all three of them. So, but what two tiles are the best for me to use right now? It's very tactical, really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah very variable. Just go it, and play it. If you really it want. is. It's also very procedural. And so you have to, you know, when, when you're doing, when the combats occur, you have to be really careful not to miss something. And it's that's, by, that's a design feature, not a flaw. But is that, you know, you could easily overlook something and then your whole machine falls apart. Um, there, and all of the different factions are very different. The first basic four aren't that different, but there have been so many expansions. In fact, I just got my Year of Moloch set and I'm kind of angry because there's a, spa a storage space for all of the existing armies. And then they announced a new one and there's no room for it in the box. So I'm, 
I mean, I think they could have put a little bit more thought into that, but I really like the game, but I almost considered it for the list, except I know I will definitely play it again if ever I have a chance. So this is <laughs> this is one that's tough to get out, but really worthwhile if if you can find somebody who enjoys it as much as you do. Yeah, if you're ready to commit. Uh, it, playing, uh, you have to you have to find that other person who you're right. who will be your sparring partner, you know, like in chess. Or exactly. Chess or so. So you can figure out what each of these factions does, for example. You have to play it quite a few times, yeah. In order you do. To be familiar with the faction. All right, that was my number six. Let's get to number five. Okay, my number five. This was the second one I thought of on the list. And I have said this, and this one won't be a surprise to you, but it's a game that I really did enjoy the, the, the times that I played it. In fact, I remember the first time we played this game. Um, but it's got, it got so bloated and it needed kind of, I don't know. Uh, the game is called Time Stories. And it is a, a great game that I just don't think I'll ever, ever, ever go back to. It had interesting story moments. Thank you. It had a lot of... I had a good time with it when I played it. I played the first... I remember we... It was Victor and Erki and I, and we just played the first scenario, and we went straight into the second and straight into the third and thought, this was, this is amazing. But going back to it, it... it I just can't... I can't make myself do all that procedural stuff, all that repeat stuff. Uh, the, the, the Teaching it to new people isn't fun. And I just, although I will acknowledge that it was a great game, I don't think I'll ever play it again. In fact, I think I gave mine away. This is a uh, very controversial game because some people love it and some people at some point just start hating it from, from love to hate, you know. Because of few scenarios that weren't on, on that high level standard that the first few set, you know, the, right. the first three scenarios were great and then... They were so great that the next series just didn't feel as great anymore. Because they, for me, I looked at it more myself, more objectively in a way, in the sense that I like that part. I like that part. I do. I do like that cin cinematics. And I played through all of the white box uh, cycle, and then I went into blue one, uh, and I played only the first one, the Hadel Project, and. It doesn't have, so they changed the mechanic of jumping back, etc. So there's not as much of that. There's the crystal mechanic now, and I like it so much. I mean, hmm. the, the new mechanic, it, yeah, it, it was a nuisance. It was annoying. At some point, if you play like 10 scenarios of time stories, it starts to get so annoying. But you still want to enjoy the, the, the theme, etc., the story. Hmm. And uh, maybe you should try, maybe like this well just one you don't have to now you don't have to play you don't have to need to own the base box each scenario mm -hmm. is a separate box basically so you can buy one or the other one doesn't matter well that's that's good to know um uh i might consider it but i still think it's it's probably one i won't play again the other problem i had with it to be honest is they took too long between releases and yes there was too much time. I mean, it wasn't. It was supposed to be like every month, but there was. It took them too long to develop the scenarios, and so it'd be two, three, four months. And by the time a new one came out, it was like, oh, there's that. I've moved on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now, I'm not playing the Midsummer, the 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 second one in the Blue Cycle, because I'm waiting for the um, the Haunted Manor. Scenario. Okay. So I have at mm -hmm. least two scenarios up front that I can play. You know. Yeah. Like, like anyway. waiting for a Netflix show. <laughs> the Witcher. The Witcher. Where is it? The second season. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or Stranger Things. Just they don't just come out. Okay. Anyway. Or He Man Revelation. Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good choice. That's a good choice. I can see. I can totally see this being on many people's list. Mm -hmm. That you will never play again. Yeah. But I'm still true to time stories okay <laughs> that's weird anyway at least they have one five. fan <laughs> uh two two 
because I play with that that one other person. Yeah, I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, so this uh, my game, my number five is near and dear to your heart, and you're the one who taught me that game. And this game is just rules wise just too overwhelming. It's something that you also need to commit to. You need to play it through quite a few times in order to just get through the mechanics and start enjoying the theme and the mechanics themselves that's through the ages <laughs> i can definitely agree with this one it's not on my list because i'll play it again i'd play it tomorrow if i had somebody to play with but uh, <laughs> but yes i agree stories yeah. <laughs> so but it, it is it, it it's a really cool game yeah it has a lot of this uh, civilization type th thematic ties baked into it and but it, it is very abstract as you play the first time it's extremely abstract and i feel I, like you need to play it not only the second time but like you need to play it maybe five times and you have to not have too long of a pause be between those plays because otherwise you forget everything you have to start over this is a commitment this is a huge <sighs> commitment you need to make in order to like this game but uh -huh. I, I, when I play it, I mean, like, uh, in order to love this game. And, I, I mean, I like this game quite a lot. It's a, it's a good game. I can see this one being a good game. But this is not something I want to invest my time in. It, this is just too much. They should have streamlined it much more, in my opinion. It would be so much more exciting. Especially the war phase. Oh, my God. Just, just lose it or... I don't know. But... Maybe if you get through that, like like for you, yes, you played it many times. As you get through all of that, I think it's great. Yeah. Uh. Miran says he likes Nations better than Through the Ages. And Nations is a lot more streamlined, um, if you wanted this. I definitely prefer... Mm. Time. I mean, Through the Ages is one of my top games of all time. It's also one of my most played games of all time. It is one so, of the top games of people, you know. Uh, yeah, people but but you're right. It, you know that that is a good point. Nations is a little bit simpler if you were looking for something. Nations has the problem of being hideous, but uh, <laughs> but other than that, it's it's also a good game. But I definitely prefer this one. Anyway, yeah, I went through the uh, videos of Nations. I've never played Nations, but as I went through, I studied the game, and I was like, no, Nations is also not for me. Too abstract for my nature. <laughs> I really want to get the Civilization, the board game, and I, uh, like, the, my Civilization game is Civilization, the board game, but it's also too huge, too long, so I will never play Civilization, the board game again. <laughs> but I mean, okay. that's the one I love the most. That that was the most Civilization type game. So, yeah. New Clash of Cultures is coming. Maybe this Yeah, it is. Be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in on it. I'm, I'm hoping that I'll like it. I've never played Clash of Cultures, but maybe oh. the new edition. Will it be is the very opposite of a streamlined game. Uh, <laughs> maybe, it will be but the new one. but let's hope the new one is. Uh, I don't think so, but let's hope. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's get to number four. Right, okay. Number four. All right. So the next four on my list are, well, the, the next three on my list are games that I just played so much. I mean, each of these games I have easily played more than a hundred times. Uh, many of them were before I started tracking, so I don't know exactly. But the first of these is this game when it came out was a mega hit for me and a mega hit for my family. And the game is Dominion. And Ooh. I loved this game. I mean, beyond loved. In fact, I loved it so much that I made my own version with cut with with like wooden chips, so that we could draw them out of a bag instead of having to shuffle cards. Because my grandmother couldn't really shuffle the cards. I mean, I, I it was only the first three expansions. Uh, the game is a little bloated now. Uh, it has so much, uh, but it's also so very basic. And, and I think that's why I just don't know, if, if ever someone were to say, let's play a deck building game, this, I would definitely think of it, but it would not be the one I would pull out because as we did on our last list, there are a lot of better deck building games. Oh, there's, 
Uh, that looks like that looks kind of like mine. I mean, mine's a little different, but um, but yeah, I mean, I spent hours stickering wooden discs, <laughs> and I bought a whole. You know, anyway, I could show it to you sometime. But it's uh, uh, it was a fantastic game. I mean, hands down, one of the great games of uh, pieces of great design, great game design. But I just don't think that there's a scenario where this would be the game I would pick with literally anyone anymore. Yeah. This is the one that they also played once and realized that this is not a good deck builder uh, in a sense of, for, for, for me, let's say. I, I can see it being popular because it's so straightforward, but that's the problem of this one. It's just so straightforward. I don't care about all the expansion that adds to that. I want some spice, I want some, some twist. This one is classic, and I don't like classic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. So. What are you doing there? <laughs> Pulling on the pants? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just adjusting my jacket and shirt. Sorry, I hope you didn't see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Let's get Sorry. to the no, My no, shirt was creeping up. Um, <laughs> yeah, get, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, Dominion, yeah. My number four is um, a game that um, I really adore for its theme, for its simplicity, really, but it's also its doom, you know. But it's not a game called Doom. Uh, it's a game called Escape from Called It. Ah. Oh. Uh, form. I, I, I spelled out form. Escape from Colditz. And uh, it has the new edition from Osprey Games. That's what I played. And look, I played one time and this game was a blast. Not because of great mechanics, because it's roll and move. <laughs> yes, it is. Cards, it's just, it's a set collection. It's as simple as that. It's a seventy, whatever the uh, the year of that game is, seventy something like that. It's an old game, but the whole components thing, the whole Osprey Games just coded into this kind of a classic. And this one is is that kind of a classic that I would enjoy, but maybe enjoy only once. It was great time where I. Your prisoners trying to escape uh, from the called its castle, basically the prison, and uh, one of the players is playing uh, the German, who are trying to get you to stay in the prison, and you're <laughs> plotting that, and then you're going for different things, and you're trying to to get into the courtyard, and then you know run into. Whatever I don't remember the, the last pace, and it was so much fun. It was so much tension that this game brought. I mean, like it felt like you're trying to run away. Just thematically, it just felt so great. Mm -hmm. And I did escape as well. <laughs> and I think I think it's played. I don't remember if I played with somebody else or played with two player. I think we played three player, and mm -hmm. the other person didn't escape. And I escaped, uh -oh. and I felt even better. <laughs> I think it was a long time ago. And then we did the uh, bl the Blender segment in right. this game as well, where the point of that Blender segment was just the excitement, to show you the excitement of es escaping the, the immersion into theme. It's great. Will I ever play it again? I don't think so. It's rather long. It's mechanically... Just too strict, too simple. Roll and move is not my choice for mechanics. And I don't really play one versus all games. I'm not the biggest fan of them. Okay. If so Though, if somebody can play the bad guy, I, I like to play only the good guys. I don't like this bad guy thing. Who, who, who's the bad guy in the scenario? German. Ah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> because you're, Very you're well. like... Prisoners held against your will, like war prisoners, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, the war is bad from both sides. I mean, like just in this scenario, <laughs> this, this is a okay. kind of a, a, a torture kind of a thing, prison, and then 
I'm trying to get out. Anyway, that's my pick for number four. For okay. Number four. <laughs> Escape from Colditz. Great. I especially like it when you roll a one. And then you're <laughs> like, I'm running. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Look over there. Yeah, I, I played I think I played this one time. I wasn't the hugest fan of it. But I know you did really enjoy it. So Just that one time. But I will yeah. never play it again. Okay. Number three. Okay, number three is a game that when it came out, I went into this game, I mean, I dove into this head first. This was the game for me. This was the only thing I wanted to play for a while. Um, oops, this is a game that is for either exactly two players or exactly eight players, and the game is Memoir 44. And it was a... I mean, I just found this to be so fascinating. The way that you would play the cards and, and the, the, the board was divided into sections and that was going to be... The way that you played the cards was going to be how you could move people and you had objectives. The dice rolling was really simple, a nice way of, of dealing with hits. You just rolled the dice and whatever you were trying to hit, if that showed up on the die face, that was a hit. It was great. The rules were super simple. The problem, though is that I dove into it head first and I bought all the expansions and mm -hmm. there was nowhere to store it. And when you add the different armies in, it's really interesting, right? The Russians gov govern by, you know, it's the Soviet Union and so they're governing by committee and so you're less efficient. Or, you know, the British, they had ways of, of sort of mitigating some, some losses, I believe. It was just so much different things to do but it was such a pain to set up. I mean, you, you, you've got to find all these terrain tiles and organize them in such a way. It took forever. Some of the scenarios were definitely more one-sided. And so you, what you were supposed to do was to play the scenario twice and then get a total of points from, from both of them so that it would be a balanced experience. But sometimes people didn't want to do that. Um, I, I really loved the game. I, I still love the game. In fact, even though it's on the list, if, if I walked into a room and saw it already set up and saw seven other people who wanted to play it, I might consider playing it because I really did love it. And I really do love it. But by myself, I just don't think I'm... Well, by myself. But me setting it up, teaching somebody and bringing somebody into it, I just don't think it's going to happen. So... That one is on the list as my number three, which is Memoir 44. Yeah, that's something I skipped because two-player combat games is not my type of Oh, game but as an eight-player game, it is so good. Uh, it's not something I would ever consider doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it will ever happen for me to have eight <laughs> players and then bring out a war-themed game. Oh. Bring out Memoir 44. Yeah. That would be weird <laughs> okay. thing ever. Okay, uh, so my number three is another just like with Escape from College, it's, uh, it's, it's the same immersive theme. Great one play, but I just cannot bring myself to go back to this game because it was so much work mentally and that's uh detective oh yes um, modern mm -hmm. crime board game and the the experience was amazing really i just liked that how you use the internet you use um but it's basically the web uh the um, website etc but you're going through all the different stuff you're writing things down you're trying to you know understand what is tied to what and you have your time uh, and you are running through different uh, quarters except i don't like for different locations and it's it, it has those game mechanics as well but it's all about deduction it's all about trying to figure out who's responsible for that crime etc you know the crime solving at it at its best it's it's very immersive it's like the uh, i haven't played the sherlock holmes the one but it seems oh. like it's in the same Five. Kind of. Yeah. And uh, the thing is that I do have Chronicles of Crime, which is 
easier to get into. It's also right. immersive. It's also crunchy because you like if you play one scenario of Chronicles of Crime, a harder scenario, you're like my head is blown, you know. But this one, it just needs that huge commitment mentally to get through that scenario. And I had great time, but I don't feel I ever want to get back to that kind of experience. Yeah, the other thing about that one is that the scenarios were a little bit on the long side. They are. So that made it difficult to to bring out with people as well. It's like, if we're going to play this four-hour game. Um, I don't know that this is the one we want it to be. But you're right, it is a good game. It's just... Yeah, this is definitely one for my list as well. It's a great experience, let's say. Right. Because, yeah. But, I mean, like, yeah, I have Chronicles of Crime, in my opinion, uh, is a better choice overly, like, because, or over Detective, because it does way, it, it's in a in easier ways, it's not so long, the series can be from one and a half hours to two hours most, you know, it could be one hour if you're really smart. You know. Yeah. The other reason is that detective requires one minute to teach the rules, whereas this one also has some rules overhead. You mean the uh, chronicles? Or sorry, of crime. chronicles of crime. Yeah, it's a one minute rules. Just dive teach. in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if somebody knows the game already, <laughs> oh, you, you, you. Well, even if you don't know the game, it's you just do. Here are the things you can do, and we're trying to do it as quickly as possible. If you move across town, it's going to take some time. Um, yeah, and whereas this one has some rules overhead in it as well. So, it is. I understand. Yeah, big again. All right, let's get to number two. Okay, my number two is another game that really hurts me. I mean, when this game came out, this game, I mean, I was just... I was all in love with this game. I remember take. I mean, this game has traveled with me across the world a couple of times. I remember teaching it to some people when I was living in Budapest. We went out, off, like we rented a vacation place for the weekend and went off by the lake and, and just played this game. I played it with my family. I played it with my friends, the, the people I lived with in law school. Uh, I mean, I played it on the app. I played it while studying for the bar exam. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, it was just a game that I played and played and played. And the game is Agricola. And I still love the game. I mean, love it. But I think I've moved on. Is, is I think, really where I am with this. Even though there are hundreds of expansions. Well, not hundreds, but there's lots of expansions with lots of different cards. The game kind of feels restrictive. And even though restrictions are good... There are a few games that kind of give you a similar feeling, but without so many restrictions. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to balance yourself between all seven scoring categories. You can kind of specialize and and do things a little bit more the way you're doing, uh, the way you want to. I loved the game. I think it is a brilliant piece of game design, and I highly recommend it to everybody, but I don't think I'm going to get it out again. Yeah. I only played it uh, with one butter. exception. <laughs> oh, the one exception is one of my very best friends has a copy, and her child has been asking to play it for years, and she's told him that when he's older, he can uh, he, he can play it, and so I'll probably go and join that game. But that's that's going to be very basic agricola at that point. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've only played the Big Brother uh, called Caverna. And by the way, Caverna would be on my list because I played it once and I, I think it is a good game, but not for me because I didn't enjoy Caverna. I rate it really low. So I, I put mm. games on the list that I rate higher. Uh, but yeah, um, it's also this kind of a commitment into those all of those different details and even Caverna feels restricted and though... Tons of options, but you still feel so restricted, in my opinion. And that's what I don't like in such games where there's a huge table presence, lots of choices, but what for if you if you just cannot go with whatever you want? And in Caverna, they say that you can go with whatever you want, sure. 
I, I didn't feel like that. <laughs> no, like you kind of have to do a little bit of everything. <laughs> Still, yeah. But, you know, Agricola, it seems like you have to, it's even harsher. Yeah, all right. Let's get to my number two, which is uh, also a board game, but it's a, it's a huge game. And I like the theme. I was enamored when I played this one because of all of this pick up and delivery in a Mad Max type uh, world, let's say. And that's a Wasteland Express. Uh, delivery service. Yeah, I, each mm -hmm. time now. Now I remember the name, but at some point I was like Express uh, Wasteland uh, mm -hmm. Service Deliver. What? What was the four? What's the four words? How they? How they go? Um, but this game, yeah, it's a pickup and delivery game where you are customizing your truck as well, trying to get goods from one side to the other. But you have to confront the traders, uh, traders, uh, raiders, uh, and it looks cool. Uh, there's a combat system, and I really like this customization of the truck itself. I don't know, just the whole package is great. As you can see, the art is kind of a unique, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I had this huge box with me, I pre-ordered that. And it is a commitment. Uh, it is a really big commitment. As you can see, it takes a lot of uh, space, there's a lot of tiny rules and things. And you have to learn that, you have to get through that. Uh, I just felt like it was a bit too much for me. Yeah. Though, I, I, I have some bigger games with me, like Nemesis is something that has a ton of rules. But just, this was a good game, but it wasn't a huge immersion. I like some parts of the game, and overall it is a great game, but... Yeah, I don't know how to explain that. Just yeah. played it once, and I was like... I'm done. It's great. I'm done. Well, I had the same experience, although it wasn't because it was great. I didn't really like the game. So. <laughs> okay. But, but yes, I also played it once and then was done with it. <laughs> I know. I just really want to have that mechanic. And maybe somebody could go, uh, put, like, have a similar game, but more streamlined. It, it would be more like. Just, just as pick up and delivery, but you can customize your truck, you know, like uh, kind of a truck mm. simulator game as a board game. Mm. That could be so great, but there's no such game. There's no Euro Truck Simulator, though, as they uh, are coming out with uh, the Portal Games is coming out with the 11, which is a football manager simulation game. And there is a football manager video game that basically is same simulator then maybe at some point they will get the truck simulator into a board game. Okay. Called Dracula. Like Agricola, but Dracula. Okay. Um, I think we need to move on. Uh <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's get to number one. I, I just got so excited about Dracula. I think you took too much cold medicine. Um. <laughs> no, I mean... I mean I, I played a ton of truck simulator on, on computer. Okay. I don't know why. It's just so relaxing. That's not what I was referring to. Uh, <laughs> okay. Just move on. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Right. It's, it's so, one. number one is the first game I thought of, right? I, and the ranking here is weird, right? I don't know that there's really any logic to my ranking. But um, this was the first game I thought of. And uh, this was the only one that's really on here for a very specific reason. And we also talked about this game on the game, list of games that I, I, I really never want to teach. Uh, <laughs> Summer of Wars? Uh, no, this game is Here I Stand. And Here I Stand is a game that you have to play with five other people. It's a game for exactly six players. It's a uh, it's several hour game. It's, it's very complicated, lots of intricate rules, lots of different factions that play differently. Well, six of them. And it's, it's basically a six player version of Twilight Struggle, <laughs> right? It's a similar, game, yeah. similar mechanisms. 
Um, well, it was before even those were out. It's um, and those require exactly four factions, but it's it's a war game. It's uh, about the Martin Luther and the Wars of Reformation, and it requires six people exactly, regardless of what it says on the on the box, um, and it requires that everybody really know what they're doing because there is just no room. It's it's very tightly balanced for six players, but if, if one person lets things down, then the person that's counterbalanced with that person is just going to win uh, because that's how the game works, right? You, you, you've you got you know the, the British and the French that are kind of at each other's throats, the Austro the Austrians and the Turks that are kind of at each other, and then the Protestants and the Catholics. And if any piece of that puzzle is missing, the game falls apart. So it's it's big. It's It takes a long time to set up. It takes a horrible amount of time to teach. It's a three- and four-hour game, maybe five and six, depending on, on how things go. Um, I just cannot foresee a scenario that I would ever play it again. Even though I'd love to, right? I would love to be in that scenario, but I don't think it's ever, ever, ever going to happen because I'm never going to set that up, right? I'm not going <laughs> to teach this game to five people. And unless five other people come to me and say, hey, Kyle, I'd love to play Here I Stand, and I already know how, then <laughs> and it's already set up, I just can't see this ever happening. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah. But it's a fantastic game, and you should totally play it if all of those caveats don't bother you. (laughs) Sure. That's what I want to do in my life. Well, I often call this... my life achievement. I often refer to this as the greatest game I never play. Um. (laughs) Anyway, my number one is also the one that that, that was first that came to my mind. And... Just get straight to it. Uh, that's uh, Brass Birmingham. Oh. Something uh, that's uh, like a new edition. The uh, a sister to uh, it's it's basically Brass Lancashire is the base game, and Brass Birmingham b- brings out the um, something extra, like beer or something. I don't know. I've never played Lancashire. There is beer and there's clay. I think. Um. <laughs> only beer was the one that was different, but I don't know. No, there Whatever. was some like clay that you were baking into pots. Uh, well, doesn't matter. Um. <laughs> so this is an economic game of of kind of a building those routes and trying to manipulate the different factories in a way that you get the most benefits of it. You know, it's component wise great. It looks amazing uh it has this kind of a building yourself up uh trying to manipulate the board in a in a way that if anybody if any of your opponents uses some of things they you get benefit from that you know you you, you want to stage that and it's such a great game in my opinion i just love my experience but after i played that one for a few days, it was like, I don't know how I will ever play it again. Because it's just so much work. It was so crunchy. It was just too much for me. Too much stress in this game. And you have to take loans. But the thing is that in this game, taking loans is not as so bad. Because this game just <laughs> makes you take loans. But because of the stress that I don't want to take loans. Because I wasn't so... I'm not, uh, I haven't played that many games that insist for you to take loans because this is a strategy. It felt so stressful for me and I didn't want to do that. And that's where it felt even more stressful because how I managed this stuff without this money, you know, just the whole experience was great, extremely immersive. Yeah, but yeah, extremely stressful. So that's why yeah. I will. I will not come back to Brass, Brass Birmingham. Okay. I can see that. I mean, I, I, I like the game. I, I think it might be a little bit overrated. Uh, but I enjoy it. I'd play it I, again. I can but see why it's rated so high. I can, just... I can definitely see why you might not want to go back to it. Though I could definitely see myself not wanting to go back. Although I probably would. I mean, Preto Porte that we talked about in the beginning 
is is on the edge of that. So Predaporte just gives me that, like it's it's where where I'm stuck in my thoughts in a game in a certain game because I'm I'm not thinking too much usually. But if a game makes me think too much, then this is extremely crunchy game, and I should be like revising my thoughts about the game if I ever play it again. But but the the Predaporte table was, was on the edge of that, you know. If it was a little bit crunchier, I was like, okay, that that would be here on this list also. Like saying, good okay. game, never played again. Brass Birmingham just just stepped over this edge. Got it. With its crunchiness. So, yeah, that's my pick. Just right away, the first thing that came to my mind was Brass Birmingham. Very well. At least I have the chips. I had to buy, buy them separately. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, they are nice chips. I sold my copy of Brass Birmingham with the chips because how you oh. sell it without the chips? Because I had the deluxe version. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the person wouldn't have any other components. He would be have components missing. So I you give I him a two euro my... discount and say find your own chips. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I eventually uh, there was a Kickstarter with those uh, chips, and then I. Yeah. Uh, bought them from there just you know to have it i even played with them uh, with stockpile and yeah they're nice good. chips i like that all right okay. so that is it for today's topic and we're gonna see you next time in a few weeks and maybe i had an idea that we're uh -oh. not gonna do a, a usual episode but we're gonna do also another special episode the afterthoughts uh of of gen Con and my board game camp because we we sure we will have so many games that we've played and that means that Hopefully. we'll have a lot of games to talk about that might be an interesting thing for that you might be fun. Uh, to see for me like I'll, I'll balance it out with the games of like cult of the old because we're gonna play uh the games that we have with some older titles yeah. as well and for you it will be all new games so we can balance it out that might be a all great right. idea for a topic that might anyway be. very well thank you for watching we see you another time okay bye bye have a great day